So then guys, we've just had the brand new iPad event from Apple, what was called Let Loose, where we've just had the announcement of the iPad Pro M4 and also the iPad Air M2. So that's right guys, finally the new iPad Air with an M2 is here. And today, like I've done recently in another video, I compared an iPad Pro M4 to the M3 MacBook Pro. And today I'm going to do something very similar. I'm going to compare the specs of an iPad Air M2 to the MacBook Air M3. We're going to review your specs by comparing both of these models. So with that, let's get started. So as I just said there, we're going to compare the 13 inch iPad Air as the base model versus the MacBook Air 13.6 inch model with the M3 inside of it. So first of all, with the display type, the iPad Air 13 inch M2 has an LED Retina display. And this is the same kind of Retina display now that we've had for about 10 years now. But the MacBook Air also has the same sort of display inside of it too. It's also an LED Retina display inside of it. So basically the actual technologies in both of these displays are very, very similar. And also, moving on to the screen size, there isn't much in it either. You can see here the iPad Air 13-inch M2 has a 13-inch display. This is the first time we've actually got a 13-inch model. Obviously, there is the 11-inch model too, but like I said, we're comparing the 13-inch model. But the MacBook Air has a 13.6-inch display, so it's about half an inch bigger than the iPad Air. It's not much really between them. But for screen resolution, again, the similarities are very similar. The iPad Air, funny enough, actually has a 2732 by 2048 resolution, whereas the iPad Air 13.6 actually has a 2560 by a 1664 resolution. And as you can imagine here, looking at the pixels per inch for both of these models, yes, the iPad Air does have a bit more of a sharper display at 264 pixels per inch compared to the 224 pixels per inch. Now, I do say a sharper display, but to be deadly honest, with an iPad Air, you are more likely to hold it closer to your face than having a MacBook Air closer to your face so really to be deadly honest in that kind of way of looking at it probably won't see much or difference in clarity on the iPad Air compared to the MacBook Air depending like I said how far away you hold the actual iPad Air to your face but one thing that hasn't changed is the refresh rate on both of these models. As you can see, both of them have a 60 hertz refresh rate. And it does look like now that Apple are literally keeping ProMotion, and that's why it's called ProMotion, to all of their Pro displays sort of devices they have out there. Their MacBooks, their iPads, and even their Pro phones too. And what this means in brightness and true tone is that the brightness is very similar amongst both the models. They both have a 600 nits SDR display. So it's okay and it's good enough to use outside and everything. But generally, obviously, if you want to get much more of a brighter display, you're better off getting yourself a pro model of the iPad or the MacBook instead of that. And to be deadly honest, I've used both of the and to be deadly honest, I've used a MacBook Air outside and it's been absolutely fine for me. And it's same with the M3 MacBook Air 2. Generally speaking, unless sun is directly pointing at it, you don't really have any problems there with actually the display and how bright it is. But next of all, let's now talk about the processors inside both of these models. So the iPad Air has now finally been upgraded to have an Apple M2 inside of it. And this has an 8-core CPU, a 10-core GPU, and a 16-core Neural Engine 2. Whereas the MacBook Air has the M3 inside of it. So this is the newer generation. Again, it's made out of an 8-core CPU, 10-core GPU, and a 16-core Neural inside of it as well. But generally, kind of speaking, if we looked at Geekbench and scores in the past, you'll actually see that the M3 is only slightly better than the iPad Air. The only main difference is where the M3 leaps in front is mainly to do with ray tracing. That is probably the only main area where it leaps out in front there. But something else worth talking about for the iPad and also the MacBook Air is that neither of these models have a fan inside of them. 
Now, this is both a positive and also a negative at the same time. And also, you've got to think of it as well that these are non-pro models. Obviously, I know the iPad Pro doesn't have a fan inside of it either, and neither does the iPad Air, but the MacBook Air doesn't have a fan. And the main reason is Apple know that generally the kind of people who they're targeting the MacBook Air M3 at are people who will not be pushing the M3 to its absolute, you know, ultimate kind of speeds out there and getting it super hot that a fan needs to cool it down it's designed for more daily kind of tasks studying and things like this and this is the kind of audience that apple even showed at their event who the ipad air is targeted at it's also who the macbook air is also targeted at too but then moving on for ram amounts the ipad air 13 inch with the m2 has 8 gigabytes of RAM assigned to it. You cannot get a 16 gigabyte or 24 gigabyte assigned to it. It's just the standard 8 gigabytes, no matter which storage that you choose. But with the MacBook Air, 13 inch with the M3, you can actually choose between 8, 16, or even 24 gigabytes of RAM when you configure this up at the Apple shop. So that is really cool to know that. And going along, like I said, with the storage amounts, the iPad Air has doubled up this time. We actually start out now with 128 gigabytes of RAM built inside the iPad Air, and this goes all the way up to one terabyte now for the first time. And then with the MacBook Air, you can actually choose from 256 gigabytes of storage, and this actually goes all the way up to two terabytes of storage. So this is one sort of tier further here. And the main reason why we only get, say, 128 gigabytes inside iPad Air is mainly because iPad OS is also, you know, a far more lighter operating system too. And also that the MacBook Air will have a bigger Mac OS Sonoma. So this is why it starts out with the sort of 256 gigabytes of storage inside of that there. But then moving on for ports, the iPad Air still just has standard one port, and this is a USB-C, USB-3 port that Apple claim can go up to 10 gigabits. Whereas the MacBook Air is actually got far better here. It has the MagSafe, but it also has two times USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports that go up to 40 gigabytes. So this is far faster. You can use Thunderbolt with a MacBook Air, whereas you can't do that with an iPad Air 13 inch. But then moving on to the main strength of the iPad Air, you can of course use it as a touchscreen, and it also fully supports the brand new Apple Pencil Pro and also the previous generation Apple Pencil 2 on it, what is really, really awesome. Whereas the MacBook Air, obviously, you cannot do this at all. You can only use the keyboard and also the touchpad. There is no touchscreen or anything like that. And I think that comes down to a preference of what you prefer. Do you prefer a touchscreen or do you prefer a keyboard and do you prefer a touchpad? It's your choice on that one. But let's move on. Next is the operating system and the iPad Air comes with iPad OS 17, whereas the MacBook Air comes with Mac OS 13 Sonoma. And I mentioned this before in my previous video with the iPad Pro, with the MacBook Pro. At the end of the day, in June time, we are getting the updates here. We're going to get iPad OS 18, and we're also going to get Mac OS Sonoma as well. And possibly lots of AI features are going to be shown there at this event. So this is going to be really exciting to see. So we have to wait and see just over a month from now to see what kind of updates we're going to get in both of these models. Next of all, we have the battery life. And this is where I hate to say that the MacBook Air is soaring ahead here. It has got like almost double the amount of battery life the iPad Air at 18 hours battery compared to the 10 hours battery life we have with the iPad Air right now. This is the same with the M1 iPad Air. Apple have retained it on this model too. And for charging wattage, the iPad Air 13 watts allows to charge up to 35 watts. Don't get me wrong, you plug in, say, a 60 watt charger, but it only goes up to 35 watts. Whereas the MacBook Air, if you've plugged in, say, a 90 watt charger, it will go up to 67 watts there in charging. So, argumentally, you could say the I MacBook Air does actually charge faster but as we saw before though obviously the macbook air probably has a larger battery inside it so it probably takes about the same amount of time to charge up both of these models at the same time 
So if you do want that all day battery life, I would personally say go for a actual MacBook Air instead of an iPad Air, especially also that you can use MagSafe on the MacBook Air to charge it up, whereas you can only just use USB-C on the bottom of the iPad Air and you can't plug in other bits and pieces into it while you're actually charging at the same time. So that is a bit of a letdown there. But the one area where the iPad Air excels in is definitely the weight. It weighs 617 grams, whereas the MacBook Air weighs 1.24 kilograms. That is essentially around about double the weight of the iPad Air, the MacBook Air is. It's double the weight of an iPad Air. So that's really incredible that the iPad Air is so light, the 13 inch model. But then moving on for actual speakers, the iPad Air just has two stereo speakers on it, whereas the MacBook Air, funny enough, actually has four speakers built into it. But really then that means that the MacBook Air does pump out a bit more sound. But then moving on to connectivity, we have here Wi-Fi 6E on both these models. No Wi-Fi 7 just yet, just Wi-Fi 6E on both of them, exactly the same there. And then also for cellular 5G with the iPad Air 13 inch, you do have a cellular option. You can actually get an eSIM for it, but with the MacBook Air, obviously you cannot get a SIM card inside of it. But what I would say is obviously if you do have an iPhone and things like this, you can set up hotspots. So you could use a hotspot even on a Wi-Fi iPad Air, or you can use Wi-Fi hotspot on your MacBook Air. So really there's not much difference there, to be honest. Moving on though, we have the webcam. And this time the iPad Air has moved its webcam over to the horizontal side down the FaceTime camera with center stage built into it. Whereas the MacBook Air just has a single notch inside of it, 1080p camera. And like I said, you do get that not love it or hate it there. And that is all the specs for the new iPad Air M2 and also comparing it to the MacBook Air M3. But I know what you guys are thinking, how much will it cost me? Well, for prices here, let's get started. So the iPad Air 13 inch M2 starts at 799 US dollars Whereas the MacBook Air 13.6 inch model with the M3 starts at 1,199 US dollars. But obviously the iPad Air 13 inch comes with 128 gigabytes of storage, whereas the MacBook Air comes with 256 gigabytes of storage inside of it. Now, obviously the iPad Air is $300 cheaper here straight away, but if you were to get yourself a magic keyboard and you know a pencil and things like this, this will actually overtake the price of a MacBook Air with an M3 inside of it. And something else here, if you go back to this here, you can actually pick up, say, an M2 MacBook Air, which has got exactly the same specs that we've just spoke about, apart from the M2 is inside of it, and you can pick this up for 999 US dollars, or even you can pick it up even cheaper that at some deals going around now. You can even pick it up for the same $800 that you can see for the actual iPad Air. So really you can get them at the same cost, but with a keyboard and a touchpad as well included on that. But the last thing that we want to talk about is colors. And both of them have four colors available. The iPad Air has a blue, purple, starlight, space gray, whereas the MacBook Air has silver, midnight, starlight, and also a space gray color too. On that, will you be buying a new iPad Air or a new MacBook Air? Personally, if it was me, I'd be picking out the M3 MacBook Air or even an M2 MacBook Air over the iPad Air in functionality. Apple really need to bump up the iPad Air to have better operating systems inside of it, better functionalities and things like this. This is where I think it's letting down the iPad Air. But there again, this is also a thing what distinguishes the iPad Air to say a MacBook Air. It's a completely different kind of product altogether. And if we made this with Mac OS on it, there'd be no point having this. And Apple wants to keep both of these kind of devices out at the same time. But that's just my own thoughts. And we've also got WWDC 2020 24 to see what Apple is going to bring out for both the operating systems on both of these devices. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Which one would you pick? Would you pick an iPad Air or would you pick yourself a MacBook Air? Let me know. And also guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. And also if you want to hear the latest Apple news reviews and comparisons like we've done today, make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.